Hello and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Join us here at each show where we visit RV products and services and RV tips, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So relax, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody, this is Rob, your host at RV Talk Radio. I am grateful that you're here to listen to us. We have lots of things to talk about. We're on the road again, and we have a lot to tell you about. But I have to start off by asking you guys to contact us. We love hearing from you. So I just want to remind you that you can email me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com or you can go straight to our website at rvtalkradio.com Go to the contact page, fill out the form, and tell us what's on your mind. Uh, if you've got some things you'd like us to talk about, things you'd like to see us improve on, we love constructive feedback. If you have a product or service that's RV-related, just give us a holler. We'll see what we can work out. Anyway, we just love to hear from you, and it gives us great ideas for the show. So if you've been following the show for a while, you probably realize that Sherry and I are, well, have been at Las Vegas. And when we go to Las Vegas, we put our, let our hair down, even though I have none. And we, you know, have a little spare cash we take along with us that we budget to take with us that if we lose it, when we go to the casinos or anything like that, no harm done. It's just, we, that's what we do. We enjoy going to casinos and we enjoy eating out and a little bit of nightlife. Um, It's, it's great. But, you know, uh, throughout the years, Sherry and I used to, I remember in, uh, oh, I think the 90s, we used to really look forward, say, once a year and get um, get with some good friends and we'd get an uh, a airplane ticket and a motel and we'd head down to Reno or Las Vegas. And we used to just, oh, it used to be just a ball. We used to have a great time. Take about a thousand bucks with us, and if you lose it, you lose it, and if you don't, you don't. But a thousand dollars, you know, you just you can have a great time for three, four days of just just going all out, eating out, going to shows, gambling, having a good time, just being an adult. And of course, you know, we've seen the growth of the Indian casinos, and so now it's kind of they're everywhere. So the Renos and the Las Vegases aren't the same anymore. So what you can really tell, and Sherry and I have come to the Oasis RV re- Resort several times, you can really tell the difference in the atmosphere and the casinos. There was no doubt that the casinos are definitely hurting. Uh and the biggest thing that was really a shocker is we found out the uh, famous pirate show that they did at uh, Treasure Island. They canceled it. They don't do that anymore. And another shocker is Sherry and I haven't been down here for a while. We used to love to go to the Rio because when you went there, they used to have a live show every hour, uh, at least in the evenings. Um, <laughs> and to be like circus acts going along the roof and... Um, kind of uh, singing shows, um, showgirl type stuff every hour, free. And it was, just, it was just like a party constantly. So we go back there and we're kind of like, oh, we've got to go to Rio. We've got to go see it. So we get up there and we start looking around and it was pretty quiet. And it was kind of early in the day. It was like 4.30 or 5. And we thought we'd maybe have dinner and, and just enjoy the Rio Casino. <laughs> anyway, finally, uh, Sherry talks to a person working there is like, so do they still do these show, uh, you know, shows every hour? And they all go, oh, no, we stopped doing that like three years ago. And it's like, oh, geez, it, it just totally ruined the whole thing. So we hung around for another half hour or so, and uh, it's like, uh, heck with it. And we, we uh, actually laughed, and, and it kind of just spoiled the, the specialness of the Rio Casino. But uh, that kind of stuff we're kind of noticing throughout Las Vegas. The casinos, when it comes to playing with your money, of course it's always in the casino's favor, but there's always that hope <laughs> you know, where you can kind of 
think you're doing all right and uh, be up and down. But it was just no hope. Uh, we went to several different places, very popular, the Silverton, the South Point, went to some of the bigger ones. Uh, it was sad. It was not fun at all. Uh, usually a casino is, you know, at least dangle a, a carrot in front of you. It, it wasn't there at all. Uh, in fact, I think with the kind of money that we played around with in uh, Las Vegas, if we took that to any casino, we would have had a blast. However, the biggest thing uh, we've noticed that everywhere we did go, there was always really good places to go eat. And, and you know, you could get a hamburger anywhere you go, but, but it seems to me just when we went out for just simple hamburgers, they were over the top and the prices were good and there was always all kinds of variety of food from pizzas to Asian food to uh, expensive meals to a fine steak. Uh, no matter what casino we went to, it seemed like we were able to find something really good to eat. So uh, there's no doubt that the Las Vegas has definitely uh, started focusing on food. Uh, the casinos are just kind of there. And yes, you can still get your free drinks. <laughs> They're not free, but they're free. So uh, at least that part was still there. Uh, that I, I don't know what to say. But uh, I think Sherry and I have finally decided that uh, Vegas is just not the happening place for us to go anymore. Uh, we do like to go to a casino and, and play once in a while, but we're just as happy going to a, a Indian casino for the evening, and they're just not that far away and and you can take uh, two three hundred dollars with you and have a wonderful evening uh, either a lot of times breaking even maybe making a few bucks sometimes you'll lose it all but if you budget that you can lose that money that's how it is so I'd have to say Sherry and I both were kinda we stayed at Vegas for two weeks we probably uh, a week was too short we could have just gone maybe two or three more days and been happy but we were definitely ready to move on so it's kind of sad it's kind of not the same vegas we used to know uh yes if you're young i gotta tell you i mean it's definitely the party place to go great places to eat really nice uh, dinners but the nightlife is definitely for the youngins uh that that part's definitely still there but the old traditional going down to Vegas, like some folks at my age know what I'm talking about, in Re uh, Reno or Vegas, uh, the magic's gone. <laughs> it's just not there anymore. I got a feeling that this might be one of the last times Sherry and I will actually go to Vegas anymore, uh, unless there's just a show or something special going on. But that's our report to Las Vegas. Uh, it, I. It's, I don't know, it's just not as good as it used to be for us. But if you're young, it's definitely the happening place. So officially today, which is actually our Saturday, almost Sunday, I'm recording this actually late on Saturday night, and I'm sure it'll go into Sunday because if we have to have this produced by Monday, uh, we are on the road again. So a lot of you folks know that on our way between Oregon and down to Las Vegas, we blew a tire. I mean, we blew a tire. We like really blew a tire. And it took out our uh, our fender part things. But I mean, and, and it was a pain in the neck and we did manage to get it fi uh, fixed on the road and learn some lessons about <laughs> making sure you have your uh, uh, roadside service still in place, which we didn't have to use anyway. Uh, we almost fell back on it, but it was like, you know what? We can still change the tire, and we managed it. <clears throat> but, so, anyway, long story short, we got to Vegas. We said we're not going to worry about it for two weeks. We did go to a couple of tire stores and kind of shop around. We ended up going to Discount Tire, and we didn't get cheap trailer tires. We actually put really expensive tires on this fifth wheel because it is a lot of weight. We're carrying 15,000 pounds or better. And I'm telling you, I don't want that to happen again. So, you know, we dropped a good $900 in the tires. But now we have the satisfaction that we have high quality tires on the RV. And right after we get the tires, we got back on the road. 
So we're still heading south. So our next destination, everything went really smooth. We only drove about 120 miles. And we are now currently recording this at a little uh, RV park. I believe it's called Blake Ranch RV Park. <laughs> and there's horse uh, horse uh, babysitting here done here too. I don't know what that's all about. But it was a nice little place. It's clean. It was uh, easy to park. Um, pretty much a regular price. We didn't want to drive a lot because we didn't know how long it take them to put the new tires on. Uh, but we're here in Kingman, Arizona. And we're just here overnight. And then we're going to start heading uh, inward a little more. And we're going to uh, to Payson area. And from Payson, we'll, uh, we're there for a week, possibly two weeks. And we're going to just enjoy the area, do some photography, try to get up to Sedona, some of those areas. Uh, we're really going to try to put a lot of emphasis on uh, just doing photography. Uh, we'll do what we can RV related, but we're going to kind of hold still. It's kind of more relaxing when you're not picking up and moving, picking up and moving. And that may be interesting for videos, I guess, but I would recommend if you're becoming an RVer or planning to be one, that picking up and moving, pick up and moving, can really be cumbersome. And that's probably why you notice some of the people with smaller rigs like the class B's or what they call uh, or class C's and they try to do what's called stealth camping and stuff it's a little easier to pick up and move pick up and move when you're don't have so many processes you have to take care of to park your rig and of course you don't have size so when you have a good size motorhome or fifth wheel like us or trailer and they go through the procedures of take down put up you know, uh, it just gets old after a while. So it's always nice to stop, smell the roses, not mess around with all the equipment all the time. And personally, I think when you're on the road so much, you're just asking for trouble. Things wear out, things break. So go a little while, make sure everything's in good shape, check your equipment, go a little bit, stop, relax, check your equipment. Uh, it seems like most of the disasters are really when you're doing the long hauls. So anyway, so Sherry and I tend to, uh, we we only do these one-nighters like this when we're trying to get from one point to another. And we just didn't want to do a lot of hours uh, in driving this time. So from Payson, Arizona, that's up by the Flagstaff area, we're kind of looking forward to uh, getting some interesting photography done. And we're kind of pushing the channel more for photography and the enjoyment of just seeing what's around us. Uh, every other person's talking constantly about their RV and the problems and equipment. And us, we just say, you know what? We got the RV. We'll tell you when things happen, but why we have the RV. This RV got us to a certain destination, and we're going to share that destination with you. The other th thing I've been finding to be kind of interesting is people. <laughs> people are always interesting. What's really been interesting, I think, is been when we're traveling and people see our our signs on the side of our car or in our RV that we own RV Travel Buddy or RV Talk Radio, uh, very rarely do we get recognized. That's probably because we're still kind of new. But then, you know, we go visit with people or in a hot tub with folks and, and we tell them what we do and, uh, and about RV Travel Buddy and RV Talk Radio and the things, RV Travel Quest too. And they got a blank look in their face. And I go, well, we're kind of like Gone with the Winds. And they still have a blank look in their face. And I go, well, we're like RV Travel or like RV 101. And, they, and they'll still kind of look at you like, well, that sounds fun, but okay. And... <laughs> And, and this isn't just a couple people. This is like 98% of all the RVers we're meeting. Uh, when it comes to the internet, I don't know if it's an age thing or whatever, but they tend to use the internet and look at the channels and things like that as they need to. Like if they broke something or want to know how to fix a break or 
change a, a tank out or, or do some electrical work. Uh, they'll get on the internet, start searching it up, and they'll f come across some of our videos. And then they might actually possibly go, oh, I think I remember, yeah, I think I have watched your videos. But, you know, it was kind of interesting is, you know, you get into this world of making videos and stuff, and you start thinking that everybody in, the, in their neighbors watching this stuff. And, and the funny thing is, is most RVers are not watching us. Most RVers are just RVing. <laughs> what a concept, huh? They're out there. I mean, we're talking not just like a few folks. We're talking about the majority of the people we're meeting. Uh, no matter how famous some of these people you've heard of, Gone with the Winds and or Chris and G or Kaylee and them with Freedom Theory or Spot the Scots or RV Travel Buddy, they have not heard anything. And the only ones that recognize you are the ones that maybe go to some of the group things like if I went to courtside we'd probably be recognized if we went to uh, some get togethers I think we would be get we'd be recognized because those people tend to watch each other and stay in communication with each other and so they kind of build each other up they feel like they're kind of you know uh, famous or something but uh, the biggest sh thing is is um, the fact that I don't know if it's good or bad. I would say it's probably good that these people are out there, thousands and thousands of RVers, out living, doing what they do, traveling all over, and they're not sitting in front of their computer every day watching uh, <laughs> YouTube videos reading our blogs or listening to our radio shows. In fact, I think, if anything, I get more folks that are kind of new to RVing or I have been RVers that enjoyed podcasts more than the videos and stuff because with a podcast, they can play them as they're traveling down the road. And I found that we, uh, with RV Talk Radio, we tend to be a good traveling companion. And I'm honored to be one of those, so I, I hope our show gives you the incentive to want to listen to us, at least while you're traveling. Uh, if watching videos is not your cup of tea, truly understand that. We do make a video version of this podcast, and, and then we have a whole bunch of followers that only listen to the podcast at, through v, uh, video, and it's just easier for them. And we understand that, too. So we just kind of make all the formats. But it's still, I mean, I thought when I'd get out on the road more, I'd run into oh, a lot of these people that just watch all these shows and watch all these other people. And I d d wasn't trying to say that our show is any more popular than anybody else's. I'm talking about all of them. Um, I don't care. You know, the famous Gone with the Winds, is, if you watch their show, they've been around a while and have big followings. Anyway, uh it's just a little reality check for all of us is we're all making these videos, but I think we're just all making videos for each other. And, and then the, some outsiders stumble in um, once in a while, and then we get kind of a new followings that way. But uh, I'm, I guess all the creators out there, <laughs> get the chip off your shoulder. There is a whole lot of people out there that haven't discovered us yet. So the theme of this show has been, for me, is called Moving On. And I guess that kind of summarizes me and Sherry a little bit. And uh, the fact of uh, uh, it seems to be happening again. And, and, I, and I say that to myself because Sherry and I did full-time travel before. And I promised myself uh, if I ever had a chance to go full-timing again... I'd stop and smell the roses. And what I mean by is each day I try to walk outside the door and say how lucky I am to have this particular opportunity right now. Or, or, uh, maybe another way to word everything is living for the now. Right now is how fortunate that right now Sherry and I can walk outside the door and see something new. 
us and meet new people and the whole works. And uh, I guess, you know, when it comes to making our videos and, and our stories is like I, I, I want to make sure that we pass on the people that are going to go into this is to, especially if you're in a hustle bustle of nine to five jobs and you finally get out of that and get a chance to travel, whether you're young or old, to change your mindset. Sounds so easy to do. It's like, ah, I can just do that. But you tend to be a, a scheduler, a planner. Uh, you're a timekeeper, a, a manager, a time management type stuff. You're uh, watching the clock or a time scheduling things. And you even tend to do it even when you are traveling. And uh, for example, the reason why I say that is like today, Sherry and I got to Kingman and we went to an RV park and we could have just sat down and, and started working on videos and, and this show, stuff like that. But we kind of got a, so at least we made the night, you know, we talked to the people up front and they said, what is it to do out here? It's kind of barren. And they did give us a little tip about a little road to go up that goes up in a mountain that a lot of people go to. And so we was like, let's do a drive up there, take the good cameras with us and see what we come up with. And, uh, it was a nice drive. It wasn't as pretty as a, as sure. I guess we're from the Northwest, so we're pretty spoiled. Uh, it's pretty easy to be oohed and odd when you're up in Washington and Oregon. Anyway, this wasn't a ooh or ah type of thing, but we did stop and we pulled over several times and pulled out the cameras and took shots of, especially of plants and animals that, well, especially plants. We didn't see a whole lot of animals that, um, we don't see every day and need to change our videos um, and our pictures and, and, and pass on to people that we want to teach you how to, if you're going to actually do this, to smell the roses, to live for the now. Each time, if you only get to do this for a month or two or maybe a, a half a year and some reason you have to go back or maybe you have a sickness in the family or or something changes and it does change that your memories of it will be I made the best of that time and so uh, I think even through the Vegas time and then trying to move on here and we have some business stuff going on too sometimes Sherry and I we forget to smell the roses to live for the now and I do it I know I'm, I, I, I'm finding myself doing that again and I feel like when I lost the opportunity to be a full-timer six years ago, and then we had to go back to the grind, if you know our story, I'll just leave it at that. When I thought about all the happiness of being able to go back into RVing someday, or full-timing, that when I look back in those days that I didn't appreciate it as much as I wish I did, and it was really easy to think that way. And then I get back in the road again and it's really get passive again. And you just start looking at it as a job and go here, go there. I got to go, go, go. All that stuff where you're uh, not taking the spiritual time to realize that each day is precious. Living for the now or smelling the roses is a critical thing to learn and start practicing even if you're just a weekend warrior kind of RVer, to take the time and say, oh my gosh, how many people would kill for this opportunity right now that can't do what I'm doing right now? Walking outside the door and seeing something totally new every day. So I'd like to propose that maybe being an RVer, and I don't care if you're full-time, and I don't care if you're... Um, just living in your RV or your extended warrior, or maybe you just go up on the weekends and take your toys in your toy hauler. I would like to have you think about how many times with all the things that you got to do to hook up and move and do your thing, how many times have you just stopped in your tracks just for a minute and ask yourself, Am I grateful for this moment? Would 
is this so is this special enough to say this is a moment you have to realize that you're just a big egg timer and you say you know, the sand is passing through and each gran granule that goes through there is a little piece of memory a little thing that you've done in your life and then eventually as you get older you won't be able to do as many things as you can back as you did back then you need to have those precious moments those nows living for the nows stored away in your brain because those are the things as your body wears out and your health starts declining and your time starting to get up come up that will keep you smiling at the world no matter what your conditions are um, it's what gives you the hope to get up every day and so creating those precious moments creating those living for the now times or maybe you're creating them and you're not recognizing them and then it's too late and you go why didn't I just soak it in for a minute I'm just urging everybody to whatever you're doing at this time and this applies to maybe being a boater too and or, or riding bikes or whatever you're doing that you enjoy that's um, makes makes you happy start putting it into your file those those gratitude moments I guess that's what we'll call them gratitude moments so let's start a partnership from this point on whatever you're doing that does bring you happiness uh, and eventually if it's RVing or, or in the future or you're doing it now that we do a little pinky pack and we say all right every day we're going to take the time and be grateful live for the now smell the roses I have a lot more to talk about on this show, but I do need to take the time to remind you about two uh, companies and services that we're supporting and they're helping support us too, is one is Go Mechanic. Go Mechanic is a application that you can put on your phone. Uh, it's easy to put on. It, it, and what's it, what it's for is just that peace of mind and also for services that you'd like to have brought to you. The app goes on your phone and it's designed to give you services that'll come to you so if you're having car um, well you can have RV services or, or repair people come to you or if you need windshield or tire issues um, many other kind of services that you, instead of moving your rig or your rigs not movable they will come to you the problem is is when you start moving around in the different states uh, if you're like if you're in your hometown you're living at home and stuff that doesn't seem like that big a deal but when you hit the road think about it just like me and Sherry when we had our blowout we were out in the middle of nowhere and we didn't know who to call what what companies are around us that could have helped us and go mechanic is designed to bring in those services based on where you are or where your location is and so if you'd like to know more about go mechanic and the application go to go mechanic.us and go to the website and it'll tell you all about their services and what they do and of course you know how much I feel about being prepared um, now you've heard what Sherry and I have gone through and I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to say I've got more than others, whatever. I just want to be realistic. We blew a tire. We are prepared and we are prepared for even worse disasters as far as something breaking on our RV or truck. But, um, one of the things that we always tell people is have a emergency fund. If you don't have one, at least have some emergency credit. Um, and then last but not least, uh, if you can get some kind of warranty on a new rig, which you normally can, on a used rig, which is very easy to do when you go into places like uh, 
camping world, we have an extended warranty, good Sam. And then people don't realize that if you buy an RV or a truck from a private individual, you can still get an extended warranty on the maintenance. We're not talking about fixing it. This is an insurance for crashes and liability. This is insurance to protect you on maintenance wipeouts. <laughs> and they can get big. I mean, especially with a motorhome, it's not unusual to get hammered with a four or five thousand dollar bill, if not worse. Uh, trucks too, uh, a blown uh, diesel can be quite costly. And that's what Good Sam extended warranty or ex you know, extended service plan is all about. So in, a, in our description, we urge you to go down, go check them out. Fill out the quote form that we have a link to. So if you go to RV Talk Radio, you'll see that we have a button now on all of our sites that takes you to the Good Sam quote page. And what's really cool is if you get a quote, you'll also get a $10 gift certificate for Camping World just for getting a quote. And I just, I'm so tired of hearing guys uh, out there and I I broke this I broke that I need a tow I'm in trouble send me money whatever you what it is it's like I don't want to hear it there's thousands and thousands of RVers out here that are normal everyday folk working folks that have finally had a chance to do RVing whether young or old that are responsible enough to handle their own emergencies without getting on the internet and starting a GoFundMe page or begging to sell a bunch of things. Now, I'm not, I mean, those are all good things, but I, I think they should be used in in a proper way. But uh, I'm urging you that here is a solution to protecting yourself, no matter what kind of RV you have, uh, I think there's only uh, drawbacks on really old RVs, things like that. But please, do the research. Go to our page or go to the description down below. Go to the link that takes you to our page, which takes you to the quote page that's specially designed just for our clients. So you can get also the free $10 gift certificate from Camping World. Check them out, people. Good Sam Extended Service Plan. I highly urge you get one. So there is one little thing that I think I want to pass on that I've seen as far as RV tips. And I want to pass on another one to you. And I was guilty of this, but now that I'm getting closer and closer to witnessing what could happen, I want to put an emphasis on people that are towing, and, and whether it's an RV, or uh, well, whether it's a trailer or a fifth wheel, or if you're driving a motorhome or a Class C, I don't care which one, or Super C, do not, please do not run your gas refrigerator to keep things cold. Shut off your gas. Go to your propane and shut it off. Why? Why do I say that? <laughs> and it's because first you see a lot of fires and a lot of times that happens to uh, do with propane. It catches and then the thing's gone. But especially on the fifth wheel. Now, I'm fortunate on my Montana, I do not see any propane lines close to the... Uh, places where my tires are but it has happened and definitely uh, especially motorhomes and stuff some of the tires are close to some of the fuel lines and if you blow a tire I'm telling you those things explode just like a grenade and then the tire pretty much starts disintegrating and you got this flying debris going hitting underneath your your fender wells and stuff and if you have a gas line and rupture that thing 
you can uh, that's where the fires start so the more and more I've witnessed opportunities of seeing this happen and and there's so many other times where there's like uh, uh, pets and animals uh, do you know how easy it is if you got a dog that's t uh, tall enough to stand up on their feet up on the count you know get their feet on the counter how hard is it for them to actually accidentally turn the knob on one of your gas tanks uh, as far as your uh, your oven sorry or <laughs> here's a really good one people run their stove uh, their ovens run out of propane Maybe they go, oh, darn, I got to run down to the store and go get some propane. And they fill up the bottle, go back, hook it back up, maybe start yakking with the neighbors, which is really easy in the RV parks. Uh, that's probably the worst distraction in the world. And then open the door to your RV only to find it filled up with fuel uh, vapor because you never shut the oven off in the first place. And that would be a real bummer if you walked in with a cigarette. <laughs> so I'm telling you, sh when you're not using your rig, two things they always tell you, shut off the gas. And if you're going to be gone for the day or something, shut off the water. It's not that hard to just walk around to the other side and turn the knobs. And if your refrigerator is, uh, you know, most people's refrigerators will work off electric too if you're on an electric grid. Uh, it's no big deal. So uh, that's my little safety tip. Uh, I wasn't actually planning on doing a safety tip, but I just keep thinking about what a terrible way or that could be prevented of a disaster that can really happen where you could lose everything you own, especially if you're a full-timer in your RV because you didn't maintain the gas or just do the simple thing of just shutting it off. And it goes for water too. Okay, well I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. So, you know, you watch a lot of channels out there, for those of you that do watch the channels, <laughs> and you say, gosh, how can I do that? And you see these folks out there and they're saying, Oh, you got to become an RV or you got to be a full timer. Get on out of here. Grab an RV. Be free. Uh, come on out. We're just living the better life and all that stuff. And I have news for you that there's sometimes a lot of information that you're not putting together is, is if you have the right career or the right circumstances, some of you folks can get out here in the RV world and maybe get out here earlier than, say, the retirement time. And Sherry and I were able to do it, and a lot of other people have. But what they neglect to tell you is maybe that one or two of them or whatever, or the part, some are alone, uh, have jobs that are allowing telecommuting and they're actually really good professional jobs. And so they can do what they're doing and be mobile. There's others that maybe inherited a lot of money or have a, a good stash. Somehow they just were in the right place at the right time. And we're talking about younger families that allowed them to not only have good equipment, but actually be able to hit the road. And then um, there's those other ones you're out there that are doing kind of the Oh my gosh, I feel sorry for me. Send <laughs> send donations or GoFundMe's, and <laughs> it working. They're you know it's working for them. But and you see them living their wonderful lives, but they're really sometimes it's almost sad to see their situations because there's a lot of alone time. And if you're doing high volumes of videos and stuff like that, you're sitting alone a lot with your pet. Uh, doing editing and just uh, not enjoying really what's all around you because you're just working your butt off to get these videos out. So I don't want to be disenchanting about it, but I want people, especially like if you're watching Sherry and I, we're not trying to make people jealous. And I even watch some videos out there that actually I get a little jealous. And then I have to 
sit back and think about, okay, really, what is the real scenario? Remember, I keep telling you these shows are entertainment shows. They're only telling you what you need to know or enough to make you a believer. And we're not trying to make you a believer. We want you to enjoy the RV life. And there is this alternative lifestyle, but it comes at a cost. Uh, the other part is you may have to wait till you're older and really plan it out and have a nest egg put aside, or maybe you actually have a pen pension coming, or you got to wait till you uh, have enough money saved and you have to wait till you're in your 60s to uh, receive uh, some of your natural benefits like Social Security. And with good planning before that and having a lot of things paid off, uh, you're not you're going to be making the money you do as a professional as being younger, uh, but you can make uh, your money go a lot farther when you're not in debt and you've uh, taken care of your responsibilities as far as plain old debt. So please remember, we like you guys to watch our shows. Our show, we want to make sure we keep you grounded. We really would love to have you out here with us, but our story, there's a lot of things we haven't told you either that uh, um, could change whether we can full-time uh, like we have been and may have to go back to the part-time extended, which is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And then there's other situations where you guys got to realize if you give up a house or things and you like to do a little gardening or you like to just have you know, something materialistic you can call yours. Uh, you want to have your own garage where you can be able to have a shop and things like that and make things. Um, you may not be able to do both. So you got to find what's going to work for you, but stay realistic. And if you're watching us, and I'm talking about all the creators out here, remember that we have some unusual circumstances uh, or we're not your typical nine to five workers all the time. And we are either privileged with having money that was inherited, which is great. And that's what, if I have a lot of money to give to my kids, I'd hope that they could enjoy their lives, something special with that. And then also you have to have the professional careers that will support telecommuting. And I'm talking about making really good money. And you're not going to find a whole lot of making really good money as what they call this work camping stuff. Um, it takes a certain kind of person to want to do that kind of work. But you're just living paycheck to paycheck in, in most circumstances. And that's okay with a lot of folks, and that's good. But um, that's not what the majority of our viewers are doing out here. There's people out here... It's not any cheaper to have an RV than it is to have a house if you really want to live your life to the fullest. The other big thing you got to remember with these RVs is some of them can be real lemons. Like, for example, when we were in Vegas, we had a guy parked next to us with a uh, Class C, and he said he bought it new as a uh, Forest River design, and he bought it in Oregon. Anyway, he said he's had it in the shop four times since they bought it, he was working on a shower leak at the time, but he's constantly having troubles. And trouble is time, time is money, is on and on. So, you know, there's also all these things that go on that don't get reported to you. Uh, some of us, we do our best to kind of paint a good picture of what's actually happening out here. Uh, for example, uh, this little park uh, uh, we spent cost this $30 to be here. And to me, that's an outrageous price. Uh, but, I mean, we knew and we've had it in our budget that while we're traveling, we still want to be comfortable and have hookups and things like that and have security. Uh, someplace we feel comfortable that's good for Sherry and I and for our pets. 
and our equipment to be protected. Uh, so there's a lot of things to really, really, really think about before you think, oh, I got to be an RVer. It don't have to do it this way. You don't have to be moving. Uh, the other thing is an RV makes a great tool to have a place to live and keep your overhead a much lower than renting a house, renting an apartment, or actually even buying a house. Especially if you're young and you're trying to build up your social security, well, not your, uh, your retirement, uh, because a lot of people don't have pensions anymore. They need to build up their 401ks and then other investments. And so I'm just saying that really, really analyze if this lifestyle is for you, because for every action is a reaction. Becoming an RVer, you may be giving up too much. So this is my time <laughs> to talk about some of the things that we do that help us pay the bills, and that's some of the great nicest things have been happening lately where we've had um, we've actually had people donating to the site and we call that a tip jar uh, we don't need the money uh, however we're paying for all the equipment and services to make this happen so it's really nice when we get a tip and if you go to any of our website you'll see a support Robin Sherry type button and you can actually tip us if you like the other thing that we love to do, and everybody's kind of getting into it, is we do have merchandise. That merchandise, once again, you know, covers the expense of the merchandise itself, but they're, and they tend to be priced a little high because the proceeds go back to the company. And we are a legit company. We're not just some, you know, when money comes in us, we have to record it and we have to put it through the books and pay taxes on it appropriately. So we're actually the right kind of organizations that when money does come in, it's taken care of properly and we pay taxes on it properly. So if you get the opportunity and like to get one, recently we've had a lot more sales than our stickers. Uh, RV Talk Radio has their very own bumper sticker. They're cute, they're not too big. Uh, you can put them in your mirror, uh, on your back window. Uh, you can also get uh, the RV Travel Buddy stickers. And we also have other merchandise. And uh, my favorite is our little cinder dolls. If you know, uh, watch our shows, you notice we have a chocolate lab. And we have this adorable little stuffed animal for chocolate. Uh, it's a chocolate lab with a beautiful little uh, scarf on it. It says RV Travel Buddy and it has Cinder's name on it. And what we ask people to do, not only do we, you know, when you buy those, the proceeds go to RV Travel Quest. Um, the other thing is, if you're doing pictures or posting stuff to Facebook, we would love it if you tried to put Cinder in your picture and then let us know. And then we'll also help promote your, your Facebook or your or, uh, YouTube channel, uh, especially with the fact that you've got Cinder in the background. So... That's our little gimmick, if you want to put it that way, our niche. Uh, that's how it takes the pain away a little bit from the expenses of doing shows like this. And you say, oh, how much can it possibly cost you, Rob? And I can, I'm can. i looking at the equipment right now that I use just for podcasting. And there's well over probably $1,500 in equipment from mics to booms to software, to mixers, etc. So, yes, I don't mind. <laughs> and I had a normal job. And, and at the time when I bought a lot of our equipment and I did all this before we got on the road because I knew our income wasn't going to be as high once I retired. And <laughs> I retired at 55, so not a big pension, folks. So uh, the extra income that comes in from... Uh, uh, what we call uh, affiliate marketing uh, is just a little bit above what our pension is. It makes life a little easier. So um, I wanted 
personally thank the people that have been buying our stickers lately and donating to us um, and or tipping us. We appreciate that a lot. And we make sure and always send a note back saying we're, we're grateful. And I have a, I've had the tendency of actually sending extra things with the stickers. So uh, we're just so excited to send them out to our, our, our listeners and to our, our viewers that anyway, uh, we try and we, we throw them right into a package right away, put stamps on them and mail them out the next day. So we actually got an order today and I want, I'm, uh, I just got into this place here, open it up and go, oh, a sticker's been ordered. Got that out the door. It's in the mailbox right now. We didn't hesitate to get it mailed out. And uh, they're great. <laughs> we don't make a lot of the stickers. <laughs> we're just fun to get them out there. And someday we're hoping when we're driving around, we'll start seeing our stickers out there. And uh, once again, we'd love to see pictures with our stickers and, and Cinder Doll in the background. And it's all just for fun, for tipping us and taking the pain away a little bit it's not a pain but it does make us feel good and motivates us a lot to keep pumping out better and better shows as we get better and better at this talent so uh, lots of great things coming up and a lot of really pretty videos coming up in the future and this also reminds me of another thing that i keep forgetting to tell people that you might want to do is if you go to rvtalkradio.com please take the time to sign up for our newsletter and the newsletter is really a reminder that a new video or articles come out and what what happens is it goes out once a week and it only goes out if some new content's been added to the website and if there's nothing new and it's a weekly uh, newsletter for uh, if we don't put contact uh, content on there within a week you don't get one and the other thing is it's a subscription based type of uh, newsletter so as soon as you get one the no first thing you'll notice is that at the bottom is you can unsubscribe at any time the other thing I need to remind you some companies big companies we are not a lead generation company, so that means that we do not, we protect your contact information. We don't give it to anybody, nor do we sell it to anybody, which is called lead generation. Uh, that's another way that some companies can make money off of you. I personally uh, uh, question the ethics behind doing lead generation, and we just won't allow it. So anyway, if you get the opportunity, please go to our site, sign up for our newsletter. It kind of helps you kind of keep on top of all of our new material. And uh, especially with the radio show, you can listen to it anytime during the week. We always try to launch RV Talk Radio Monday mornings at 5 o'clock in the morning, which that's the podcast show. The video uh, sometimes gets out later in that day because they're actually pretty big files and trying to upload a big file like that to YouTube can be quite, I could actually have started it the night before and it, it actually would be uploading all that night and won't actually launch till later in the morning or even the afternoon. So uh, that's why you see the video version come out so much later than the actual podcast version, which is the voice uh, which is the registered podcast that you see on iTunes and all the other podcast directories out there. Yep, we're the real things, people. And we are starting to get towards the end of the show. We always try to keep the show under an hour. I think we've gone over once or twice, usually when we have interviews. Uh, we used to do a lot more interviews, and um, I don't know, I, I get the impression that you guys kind of just like to hear us talking to people that we've interviewed before, but uh, not necessarily on the show, so we're kind of spreading out the interviews um, maybe once, one a month at the most. Uh, we'll see. 
we'll just kind of play it out by the ear. That's another thing you guys can give us feedback on. Do you actually like the interviews that we do? Do you want us to do more, less, or just once in a while? Uh, especially if we think we've met up with somebody that would really give you some good uh, inspiration for your RVing. So, anyway, take the time to talk to us. Let us know what's on your mind. Uh, criticism, it's okay as long as it's constructive. Uh, that's... <laughs> You know, sometimes we get some harsh stuff once in a while. We call those trolls, but uh, we really do want to do a good show. And it'll take time. They say podcasting, uh, usually your first half year to a year, uh, then you start really getting into a, a routine, a rhythm. And, and then you listen to your old podcast and go, oh, Lord. So... I've actually done that already. I've like listened to some of our older podcasts and go, well, yeah, we we're trying to figure out what our rhythm was there. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, uh, I, I do want to take the time to uh, say thank you and how grateful we are to our listeners. Uh, recently, we've gotten a lot more people contacting us, and we're so thankful when that happens. And how much they like the show and that means a lot to me because a lot of folks don't realize how hard it is to get a show out every week and it says it sounds so easy but it's once you just doing the show the sh doing the show itself is fun but then getting the show marketed yep we market uh, we have to get these uploaded to their different platforms and be consistent and uh, trying to make sure that everything processed properly. Um, it's a lot of work. And to commit to once a week doing a podcast is sounds lots, like lots of fun. And I keep hearing people say, oh, wait, I think I'm going to start a podcast. <laughs> it's like, all right, you just want to do it for the, you know, for the uh, recognition. And it's like, it's, we look at it as our family that we're sharing information with. And so every week, more and more we go, the more we feel like we have a relationship with you, our listeners. And that takes commitment, on, commitment on our side and commitment to our listeners that know that we will be there every Monday to do our show for you. And... I don't know if we'll ever step it up more. Uh, it all depends on the future. But once a week right now seems to be a good schedule for us. And it seems like it's a good schedule for you folks. And I get the impression that moving our podcast to Mondays instead of Fridays has actually uh, been a very acceptable by you, folk, our listeners. Uh, once again, contact us and let us know what you think about our times. Um, things you'd like us to do in the future we want to hear about and any merchandise or a little cute little tr trinkets that we could have or maybe we should try to do more contests or something like that uh, uh, there is a a guy that I actually need to recognize as Jay Jazz I, I don't know him very well but he seems like a super neat guy and I actually like to interview him one of these days but uh, he had a little contest of winning a Bounder a, a, a Fleetwood motorhome toy, and I I actually won it, and he got it to us pretty promptly, and I keep saying I'm going to say something. I'll try to do a video for him, but we've just been so swamped, and I just can't get it done. So here's I, I just got a little shout out for J Jazz, and I don't. I, I really need to interview him more so I can actually give you more of a definition of what he does. Uh, seems like a very nice and polite person and does very informative videos and likes to have fun with everybody. He, I know that he writes on our uh, sh comments and he, uh, I've seen him on other people's platforms and uh, very interactive. So 
Uh, we are grateful to his friendship and we are grateful for the gift that he sent us. Uh, so anyway, gotta hit the road guys, getting late. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob Scribner. See you next Monday at RV Talk Radio. Bye now.